Hello, everybody. Welcome to Revolutionize Your Classroom. It is uh, Saturday morning. We are so happy that you guys have joined us. And we've already got a lot of people uh, on the webinar already. Uh, but we're waiting a few more minutes for some more people to come on board. This is kind of the pre-show. And uh, I see so many people who are already coming in from all over the country. This is really cool because I'm in California. I'm in Palm Springs. The president landed here yesterday, so he's enjoying some bright sunshine in our beautiful city. And I've got so many people. I've got Heather from Mount Pleasant, Lisa from, I think that's Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha's from Kansas. Uh, uh, Kristen is from Newark, Indiana. Hey, Indiana in the house. Uh, Amy's from Massachusetts. We've got so many people who are coming on board right now for the Revolutionize Your Classroom webinar training and discussion that we are going to be doing today. And it's a really cool topic, and I'm really excited and so happy that you guys can be here. Hi, Doreen. Hey, Carmen. Karen. Uh, and Liliana from Mexico City, very cool. So happy that you guys are here. Wendy's up in Alaska. Man, I bet it's cold up there. Um, we're going to get started here in just a couple seconds. Um, we really appreciate you guys coming to uh, join us this Saturday morning, wherever you may be, for what I think is a really interesting and important topic um, about our classrooms and our students and how to get kids more engaged and learning. Uh, my name is Sam. I'm going to be kind of behind the scenes today. Uh, I'm going to be answering uh, or just watching the webinar along with you. Um, there's going to be um, a few places where you guys can interact because with this format, uh, we really have the ability to do some really cool, cool stuff um, and, and make this a very interactive uh, event. So, for example, I just opened up a poll that I'd love to get you guys' feedback on. Are you guys teachers? And if so, what grades do you teach? Um, we've also got a, a chat box, and um, so anytime you guys have a, a question or want to participate, feel free to add it into, into the chat box. And uh, with that, uh, I'll be here to just kind of watch over and see how everything's going. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. If you can't see or hear anything, you might want to refresh your browser. Um, but really, I'm not the person that you want to see or hear from, so I'm going to step back and I'm going to uh, give the floor over to uh, Don Winnig. So, Mr. Winnig, the floor is yours. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks, Sam. Sam's our uh, wonderful tech guru. He's the guy who takes care of uh, all the mysteries in life for us and makes it all very easy. Uh, so, if if we've not met, I'm as Sam said, I'm Dominic. I'm owner of Yoga Kids, and uh, just glad to welcome you all here this morning. I'm I'm just amazed that there's over 375 people uh, signed in for our call today. So that's just awesome. Very excited, and we've got great, uh, just great awarenesses and information and tricks and techniques to share with you today. Um, it was 30 years ago that my beautiful wife, Marcia, started uh, revolutionizing the way that yoga is taught to kids in this country and, and around the world. So um, yeah, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year and really excited about that. And glad that you're here to help us. Today, we're going to be uh, Mary Roundtree, who's a veteran elementary school teacher, is going to be sharing with you the tricks that she uses in the classroom using the Tools for Schools program that she's uh, working with. And she's a certified Yoga Kids teacher, along with being a third grade teacher for many, many years. So she's an expert. Uh, by anyone's standards, and she's going to be talking to you about emotional regulation, uh, energetic regulation, how kids uh, can be happier and more fluid in the classroom, ease of curriculum integration, kinesthetic learning, and 
how to use the Tools for Schools program in a classroom environment. And uh, I think you'll all be excited to hear what she's got to share with you. So uh, without any further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Anne Ann Huber, our program director, and Mary Roundtree. And they're going to take it from here. Make sure that you stay on for the end of the end of the webinar. There, we've got some surprises for you, so I think you'll be happy uh, happy to get all that. Did I get promoted? You said I was program director. <sighs> I, no, I'm project manager, but that's okay. Project manager, <laughs> project manager. I do I do that too, just because yes, they program. sound alike. I do that too, and Alicia's caught me doing that. Um, yeah. So. Not cool. <laughs> well, our program manager. Well, I just I I uh, want to say welcome everyone. I'm so so excited to be here. Uh, I do want to start out by letting everyone know that uh, we're going to be talking about kind of the techniques that you can use to integrate yoga in the classroom. We're going to give you the the what you need to do, but you'll want to stay to the end because that's when we're going to talk about how how you can do it. So we're going to talk about the what, the techniques, and then we're going to talk about the how and the tools. So stay to the end because we have an awesome, awesome, unbelievable offer uh, that I can't even believe we are offering. It's so great. Um, and one more thing before we get going and I introduce the lovely Mary is I know that I am a multitasker. My phone is right here. Um, uh, please, uh, we want you to get the most out of this, so go ahead and shut down the Facebook, and uh, you might want to get a pen and paper because we got lots of great information. Um, so that's that's all of the housekeeping. I want to introduce Mary, who I just absolutely adore. Uh, I met Mary about three years ago uh, when we took the Level 1 Foundations course together, and I'm going to let, uh, well, as, as Don said, she's uh, been teaching for 11 years, third grade, Alabama, and three years ago you found us, and why don't you, Mary, tell us a little bit about why you found us and how you found us and whatnot. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Birmingham. It's 11 o'clock and sunny here. Um, I found Yoga Kids because I had seen a difference in the children in my classroom. They were coming to me really stressed, really anxious, really unable to regulate their behavior, their impulses, and I needed help. My regular classroom management tools weren't mm -hmm. working. I knew how yoga benefited me by quieting my mind, so I thought, okay, I think this can work for kids too, because we're all human, whether we're little or big behaviors are the same. So I did a search and found Yoga Kids and jumped all in. I saw the benefits from the relaxation techniques, the guided visualization, the focus and concentration poses. And like I said, I went all in and um, became a certified teacher. So that's how, that's how I found Yoga Kids and that's how I've continued to use Yoga Kids. Awesome. Awesome. Well, before we get to the three, t I have a puppy here today. This is Sandy. Uh, that's awesome. And we're going to talk about how Yoga Kids has really changed, you know, what what the difference is between five years ago and, and you know, now. I want to talk about that as we look at each point because I, th I, think, I think teaching is a different experience for you now, right, than it right. was. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, before we get to the first first technique is I, I do want to talk just for an instance about tools for schools and, and what that is and uh, it's for general educators it's for anybody working in a classroom environment and it's not it's not just uh, for PE anymore a, a lot of uh, programs they, they incorporate yoga but it's just in that PE time and I don't I don't know how much PE time your kids get but Mary, but it's probably not enough. <laughs> yes, it's not enough, and recess time has been cut. I know in a lot of schools, um, PE, I think, has, has been cut. I mean, just time outside to play and be creative and 
not be stressed, to release that energy, it's, it's just not happening. It's more right, towards right. the curriculum and testing. Right, right. right. So we had to bring it in. Uh, I, I have a Let me do it. Why do I have to go, Sam? It's going to be crazy. Uh, let me look at where he is. If okay. you, uh, it's not if just you for PT anymore, but but also, um, so it's it's integrated into the classroom, and that's what this is. And also, I wanted to, the next point really is is that uh, you don't need to know yoga, right? I mean, right. It, it, it you started with having with doing yoga yourself, and actually, I'd love to know how many people out there um, already are doing yoga. So, Sam, I want you to put a poll poll out there because. Uh, what what's great about a program though is that you don't need to get, you don't need no. to get, so to integrate these tools. So now I, I I have you here and I can say that these tools work because you've told me that they work. Yes. But um, <laughs> I, I do have a, a, another testimonial. It's actually the the program itself has been studied and Sam will put up the uh, quote of the results of that study. Uh, it was studied by Purdue and Indiana University, and I I do want to bring that up. Um, the results, he's he's getting there. <laughs> there it is, there it is, and I'll just read it to you. Uh, the results showed a significant positive effect on the academic achievement, general health, personal attributes, and relationships of students in kindergarten through fifth grade. So it's right there. I'm not just you know saying this and and you know it's actually been studied so that's the why you should listen to us and why this matters um, we we genuinely want to help solve problems for educators and we've we've come across a solution that actually works and that's why I'm so excited to be here today and to start talking about these three things and uh, so let's just jump right in and talk about the first technique and the first tool because it's the biggest. It's the biggest. And I wrapped it in uh, together, and it's right there, and it's energy regulation slash classroom management. Now, I know that classroom management is this all-encompassing term that means everything, right? I mean, it's getting the students to do what you want them to do when you want them to do it, right? Exactly. And if you don't have classroom management skills, it doesn't really matter how great a teacher you are. I mean, if you exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> I, I mean that. I I did a few. I did like a a year of student teaching, and I realized, oh my god, it's all that's all it is. It's just it's classroom management. And if you're not good at that, you're also not good at time management. Right. You can't teach the curriculum that we're supposed to teach if the kids are bouncing off the walls or um, unfocused, like goofing off. Yeah, <laughs> if you can't, teach. Are, you can't you, teach. You're managing all day. Yes, yes. You can't te teach unfocused students that, that uh, you have to regulate their energy, and right. so that's the number one thing that I think the tools do. That I think the yoga techniques do. Uh, what are some things that you do for your students in that regard? Well, I, I use I use it throughout the day. Um, when they first come in. On Monday mornings typically the students come in, my third graders, and they're rested and they're quiet <laughs> and I need them to have a little more energy. I need their focus to be there. Um, so we'll do some volcano breathing to to bring that energy in or reach up for the sun and bring that energy to their bellies. They'll just stand at their desk and do it. It doesn't require a lot of room. It doesn't require low yoga mats. We do that. On Tuesday, usually, it's just the opposite. Um, and we have to calm down. So we do some peace breath, some bunny breath, and they can feel their bodies relax. They can feel that noise in their head go away. So they can be more focused. That's the morning routine. Um, when we line up to transition, transition times are really difficult. And they transition a lot. Yes. That's, that's the thing. Yes. 
from the floor to the desk, from the desk to the floor to the library, to the, lunch, to the other classes, to yes. the it's constant. And transition can be fast or it could be chaos. Mm -hmm. So usually I will call neighborhoods that we have here or boys or girls and mix them up and they'll stand in tree pose. And if they're there focusing, it's hard for them to talk, it's hard for them to dance around as we're lining up. Shove I mean, other people, shove not. other students. <laughs> now, they were silly at first, I will say. When you first introduce it to the classroom, they're going to act silly. Yeah. They're going to act silly. But after a while, they see the benefits. They line up. They think it's cool, especially third graders. They think it's so cool to be doing yoga. Um, it, Sometimes we walk down the hall and we pretend we're tightrope walking, um, keeping nice. everything in order. I mean, it, it keeps them focused. Nice. After lunch, I'm just going to share that too. It's my favorite time. After lunch, they've eaten. They're just, they're over with the day. So we'll put our heads down. We'll do a guided visualization. Um, special times, like we went to the symphony on Friday. I was very nervous about third graders going to the symphony. <laughs> so they put their heads down. I created a guided visualization for them to see themselves sitting in the symphony, hearing the music, picking out the violins, the trombones, the drums, feeling that heartbeat. So I think that, that it gives them a vision in their head when they go to say, hey, this is how I'm supposed to be. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. Yes. Yes, and that's all that's all behavioral stuff that's gonna yes. save you time. Right? Because if right. they spend the day focused and in their right headspace to learn, then you're not spending twenty minutes trying to get them to focus. Right. Or so focusing on individual uh -huh. students. It's a whole group thing. Right, right. So that is uh that's amazing. So uh, I want to make sure that we hit everything on my list. I, oh, I wanted to talk for a second about um, about partner poses and group poses. Do you do use that a lot? Do you use it to resolve conflicts? Do you do that kind of thing? Well, not so much to resolve conflicts. Um, sometimes it can it can increase a little more stress. One of the things I do, I don't let my children choose their partners. <laughs> because they will choose the same people all the time. So I have little popsicle sticks and I pull the names and that's their partner. It may be a boy. Third graders are really weird about that. It may be a boy and a girl. It may be somebody that is at a different academic level. It may be somebody that you know they're not really good friends with or somebody that they have conflict with. But I do, before they partner up to play a game, they do a boat pose together. Which nice. Feet, hands, balance, it, it, it breaks the ice. And they hate it at first. Again, just like we as adults. You take me to a yoga class and you tell me to partner with somebody, uh-uh. I don't want to do it. But once that ice is broken, it's kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking about like small groups too. Like yes. putting them up in small groups, having them do a, a group pose. Yes. Would be nice to build that teamwork and whatnot. And we do that. Um, we do that sometimes. Like uh, if we've got a group of five, we'll just hold hands and reach up, just to bring that connectedness into that group. Nice. Or as a whole group, if I'm teaching a class, um, sometimes I teach classes in here right after school, and we'll do that as a whole group and and, and use partner poses that way. Sweet. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that it's it's a big topic, the energy regulation and the classroom management. And I know that Mary is, is mentioning poses that if uh, you've never, uh, if you don't know what yoga kids is, you might not know what reach for the sun is or volcano pose and all of these things that uh, Mary is talking about. That's why you have to stay till the tools at the end, though, because that's when we're going to talk about, you know, we're going to give you all this stuff and all this knowledge that you have. So. Uh, I do want to make that point. <laughs> um, let's go to the second tool. So let's bring that up. Oh, Sam. 
Uh, and that is curriculum integration and kinesthetic learning. And this is one of my favorite topics about tools for schools. Is and it it's what sets it apart from the PE is that we integrate it into the curriculum. So it, you can use the little flows that we talked about to regulate their energy before they work, but you can actually integrate it in. Do you want to provide some examples of that? Yeah. Yes. Um, reading is where I incorporate it, I think, the most. Um, there's, there's a book, um, Kitten's First Full Moon, that we usually do at the beginning of the year to incorporate the yoga with the cat pose. And... Um, and, and, and just all the activity and the movement. We act out the book and we throw some yoga poses, tree pose, cat pose, cow pose, I mean anything. I mean the kids invent their own poses even. So there's, there's no having the background knowledge of yoga. We, we act out the book. We do math problems. We may get in triangle pose and find the different angles and talk about obtuse um, different types of triangles, acute triangles, how many angles, what's a line, what's a line segment, um, multiplication facts, we write them on each other's backs and answer them, spelling words, um, they get in different poses. Um, my favorite thing to do during the warmer months here is to go on a little field trip out, there's a park beside us and there's some trees and they look for different angles within the trees or different yoga poses. So it's easily incorporated um, into the curriculum, science, energy, it's easy to incorporate and they love it. Uh, yeah, that's, what, the thing that you're talking about is one of, uh, Yoga Kids has these different elements, um, and one of them, and the elements are the building blocks of our program, and they really teach to the whole child and all our different learning styles, and one of those elements is, you know, uh, uh, reading comes alive with yoga, mm -hmm. and that's the one that you're talking about is, is incorporating it into a story, so if you're reading a story and, you know, it's, they mention a cat, and all the students on the do cat pose. You find that it helps them pay attention when it's part of that? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. They're waiting for it. They're listening for that word cat. They're listening for that word full moon. They're listening for tree because they want to do that pose. Right. So they're totally focused. <laughs> that's why, yeah. I mean, that's such a great thing. That's a great uh, I love that. They have to listen so they know what to do. Right. So they're doing the story retention and they're, they're, they're you know, they're focused. And they, also their comprehension. I mean, comprehension for third grade is a big thing. Um, and if they're not focused, if they're not paying attention, they can't remember, they can't talk about what they've read. And, and reading's not just calling out words, it's remembering what you read. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, but yes, third grade is all about the comprehension. I yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, one of my favorite examples is the um, cat cow pose for, for concave convex. Yes. Like, that's such a great example. It's just, you know, yes. and I, I think the kinesthetic movement of it actually just helps them retain things better. Right. You know, not just for stories, but any kind of fact. If you're you know, do you find that to be the case? Does the movement actually, we have this whole thing where they're storing the information not just in their head but also in their bodies. Right. That's what I'm getting. Right, the movement helps tremendously. I mean, and, and if you, all of y'all probably went to school and sat at a desk and listened to a teacher lecture and then you had to do pages in a spelling book or a math book. I mean, I don't even know how much we retained from that. <laughs> Nothing, really. But, School has to be fun these days. Kids are less focused. They're used to moving around. They're used to computer games, information coming at them. Um, so they have to be moving. They have to be touching. They have to have different ways to learn. And they all learn differently. But movement increases that so much. Their focus. Well, you you're talking about the uh, having them having them learn their in their own ways. I'm still getting an echo. <sighs> <laughs> if I seem slow, it's because I hear an echo. Um, 
when, when you were talking to me the other day about how you let them re reach the standards in their own way. Can you right. talk about that? Because that's more of that. Right. Well, one of the things, because we're talking about how hard it is to get science and social studies in these days, and um, I thought it was just an Alabama thing, but apparently it goes all the way to California, too. Yeah. But um, I will give them a sheet with the standards and energy, simple machines, um, genetics. I mean, we have some about how anim animals adapt, and they have a folder, and they can create it in their own way. Some of them like to create cheers with facts. Some of them like to create projects with their hands out of clay or paper. Some of them like to create computer presentations. But I give them the topic and they create it. And then they teach it to the class. So they are hyper focused. I've had children that were very, very much a struggling reader that probably couldn't retain and comprehend the information, but she could create a heck of a, a, a model of the earth using clay and get everything, the little um, pieces and the water and the green parts, she could get all of that. And to me, that's what teaching is all about. We have to get those kids to learn in their own way because we don't learn the same. No. No. <laughs> and actually, I've seen, you know, the learning pyramid. If you Google learning pyramid and you see this, lecture is where they retain the least, where yes. we all retain the least. And teaching is where we retain the most. Right. Just having your students become the teachers means they're going to learn so much more. Yes. They're going to retain so much more. Yes. That's, I, I find that fascinating. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, uh, do we have any questions so far about our first uh, two techniques, uh, Sam? Sam, I yeah, wanna... we've got, you know, we've we've got some some great questions coming in uh, that we're going to put to, uh, and I'm gathering them all for for the Q and A. If you guys want to continue um, adding questions into the chat box, that would be fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of great value that's coming out of this, and then a lot of people are really responding to some of these great techniques that how you can use um, these these tools in your classroom and really build on that learning um, and, and teaching children the way they they learn best so you know how do you then empower students um, you know because I am sometimes shy I know that and and I don't always feel like I can get out there and do the things that I can so Mary how do you empower students using these techniques well, the first thing you have to do when a student in, enters your classroom is get to know that student. Get to know what their gifts are. They come to third grade and probably even second and first grade knowing what they're good at. They come to me saying, I'm not a good reader. I'm not good at math. I don't have any friends. <laughs> I mean, we do a survey at the beginning of how they feel about themselves. They're coming to third grade with negative thoughts about themselves. So the first thing I get to do is, is find out who feels good about themselves and who doesn't. Yoga helps them feel good about themselves. We talk about that at the beginning of you know taking out that plug of negativity, of bad thoughts going into our brain, just taking it out, throwing it away, putting a new cord in that's only flowing with, with good thoughts, I'm good at this. And really I find something, anything that they're good at and make a huge deal out of it. Um, I awesome. have a, I had a child that came in this year, and, and you can't see it in the background, but um, he really was an Eeyore. I mean, he was negative. He didn't think he was smart. I really didn't think he was a, a strong learner. Um, he felt terrible about himself. He just looked awful. One thing that he loved and he created was this thing called the flying squid. And I had him create a huge flying squid, and we made it our class mascot. We celebrated it. They put it over the intercom. <laughs> our class mascot is the flying squid. I wish you could see it hanging. There it is, hanging with, with the tails. Um, it made him a different child. 
So you start with that and then you build with the yoga. They feel strong. They feel successful. The partner poses, the group activities, get them to talk to other children. It's painful at first, but we talk about leaning into the discomfort of stepping out and doing something out of our comfort zone. That happens in third grade. So there's lots of ways to empower children. I could go on forever, but I know we have time limitations. No, I, th I think the most powerful words that one hears, the ones we talk about, the most powerful words are the ones we talk about. You know, one of our elements in the and how much that is, and how we, you know, how great we are. Yes. Kids, kids by far already think they're not kids. And I'm still looking at that person. I'm still thinking of it. Right. And a lot of things we do are, as teachers is, is focus on that. Oh, you're so smart. You got that work done so fast. You were the first one finished. Um, or great job. Your handwriting is beautiful. And so we want to celebrate the children for what they do best, but they may think they're not smart because it's taking them 30 minutes longer than their peers but they're getting the answers and they're being careful and um, they're persevering um, and those are the things that we should celebrate the way that they try, the way that they're conscious of mistakes, the way that they organize um, those things rather than how smart they are, or how quick they are or how neat their handwriting is. I mean we've got spell check and computers. <laughs> That's how I feel about that. I want Sam to talk for me. Uh, well, I actually am going to mute you because uh, your, your background is uh, is going crazy. You know, I think this has just been fantastic, Mary, because you, know, you really do find... I'm going to YouTube. Hold on. There you go. Um, you know, it really is very cool how you have been able to use these tools and use these techniques in a very different way that really engages your students. I mean, you've, you've given some great examples about how you've taken kids at very difficult times in their lives. I mean, you're transitioning from, you know, uh, a, a little child and into a learner. And that's an important age. That, was, that third grade and fourth grade years are very difficult because you're, you're transitioning to a time where you're asking kids to sit down, be quiet, pay attention, all this stuff that they're not used to doing. And then they have to focus and then they have to, you know, remember things and, and all these these things that we put on kids to um, to turn them into a studious learners. And so this is a great way to kind of bridge that gap and show people how or you know show students how to be successful um, as they grow and as they learn and as they become uh, good students and good adults. And that really just begs the question is, you know, how valuable is the success of your students? And I think Mary has shown brilliantly that she takes her students' success both in third grade and in fourth grade and in fifth grade and, and as they grow, um, so very seriously. I mean, Mary, you've been doing this for a while. What do you think, you know, how, uh, and you can unmute yourself manually because I can't do it for you. Um, how do you, you know, what has the, what have your kids, um, how have they gone on and, and how they use these uh, skills as they, they continue on in their, in their, uh, in their um, education? Well, I, I have heard from parents and I've, I've seen kids um, our school goes to third grade, so after they leave me, they go to uh, an intermediate school, and then a middle school, and then a high school. Um, but I have, I've had parents say, "You have given through yoga, through your teaching, um, my child the tools to feel good about herself or himself, and they felt successful in your class." So they went on and, and continued with that success because we all know success breeds success. If we feel successful, we can 
take another step forward. Then we take another step forward. It's the same for kids. Human behavior is human behavior. So through, through teaching this way, we give children success because we don't always learn the same way. They can learn the material. They can feel good when they take the test. Um, they may not do the best on standardized test scores, but they feel good about themselves, and, it ch and they choose to take risk. They choose to want to learn because they feel good. It feels good. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, Mary, you took a very, I'm you again. There you go. Um, you know, you took a, a very, um, a, a very interesting approach uh, to this profession of teaching, you know, by becoming a full Yoga Kids certified teacher. Um, and, and that is a big commitment. You know, you were, you had to go through all three levels of, of training. Um, you're now licensed to teach yoga kids uh, in your community if you wanted to. I don't think you are. Um, and, and you went through a lot of, of time and money and training to get this full yoga kids certification in order to bring um, this style of learning and this style of teaching uh, to, your, to your students. And it's a big commitment, and I wish more teachers would commit to their students and to their students' education and future growth the way you have. But it's just not always uh, the best route or not always, um, you know, full certification in yoga, kids, uh, is, is a big commitment, and, and not everybody can necessarily do it. But there is a shortcut that you can take if you're interested in bringing uh, this whole child learning, this top to bottom education where kids can be empowered and work through any issues themselves and be self-regulated with their emotions and know how to do it. You know, we've put together a lot of great tools that Mary uses in her classroom all the time. And I think one of the big tools that she really loves is the Yoga Kids Toolbox. It's these cards that have pictures of a pose and a description on the back so that kids can learn different poses and do them in the classroom and there's reasons for each of the pose, you know, and curriculum integration for each pose that you can use in your course and in your classroom. So you can understand how these, ben uh, how these uh, poses benefit you and what they can do. I know Mary has also been one of our master mentors where you have this really in-depth discussion and really deep uh, mastermind into a topic. And some of the topics that are of particular interest to uh, this community of teachers and educators is, you know, the, the topics around ADHD and, and ADD. Kids today are just unfocused. And Mary does a great job in her class of getting them, you know, focused. You know, she said when, they're, when they come in from the weekend and they're sluggish and they're tired and, they, and she needs them to be engaged learners. And then when they come back from lunch and they're just bouncing off the walls and, and you know, need to get them refocused. You know, test prep, getting kids ready for a test and learning the importance of calming yourself down, getting yourself refocused, and getting into that mindset and preparedness for taking a test. Because tests are super important uh, for kids as they develop and, and as they move through the educational system. And I know, Mary, you are, get asked this all the time, and I'd love for you to talk about it for a second, is, you know, is... Uh, is yoga a religion? What kind of pushback do you get from parents when, you, when you're teaching yoga in the classroom to their third grade kids? Believe it or not, being in the Bible Belt of Alabama, I, I haven't gotten a whole lot of pushback. Um, I feel pretty confident in um, the research and the information about yoga that, that I can push a little closer to the people that, that think it is a religion. One of my favorite things to say is yoga is about being a good person. Yoga is about not just doing the poses um, 
it's not just a physical activity. It teaches goodness, kindness to the earth, kindness to oneself. And I say all religions include that in there. I can't think of one that says be a bad person, steal. <laughs> I can't think of any. Um, and so I use that as, as more of, and I question it back to them, would you like for your child to experience higher levels of self-esteem, self-confidence, learning how to, to have a strong character and take care of others and be kind? And usually there's not a whole lot of pushback to that <laughs> because yeah. everyone, everyone wants that. Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. Of course we do. Of course we do. You know, so that's, that's a fantastic that it's been so well received um, in your community. And it, it shows that the people are, are more open and, and, and receptive to, to new ideas and to, to new ways of learning. You know, Yoga Kids has been around for, I think, 25 or 30 years now. And we have an entire library of DVDs that are aimed specifically for kids uh, in the home and in the school to really get them familiar with these new ways of learning and moving. And we started out with Yoga Kids. And we moved on to Yoga Kids ABCs and 123s. Silly to calm is a big one in my house because I've got a toddler who just does not know how to get calm at night. And of course, we've got Tools, uh, tools for Schools for the Classroom and Tools for Schools for edu Physical Education, which really, you know, PE is the natural place where you think that this would go, but it's not. It's, it's really kind of the, the last stop because yoga can be in the classroom so well. You know, I mentioned that we've been around for a long time, and, and it started with a book. And it started with Marsha's book, Educating the Whole Child Through Yoga. It was inspired by Dr. Dr. Howard's theory of multiple intelligence, and we've talked about that a little bit today. The Yoga Kids program teaches yoga as a medium for learning, using different elements designed to stimulate and teach. When children practice yoga in this way, they are also learning math, reading, science, nature, and much more. And, you know, do your test scores, Mary, do they, uh, do they show that? Do they really, are, 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 your, are your students learning math and reading and science, and are they retaining it better because of yoga? Yes, for the most part, yes. Um, it, because the yoga teaches them to, to share things and they are the teachers and they're moving and they're focusing and remembering and singing and dancing and playing and, and our kids miss that. Through play, so much learning happens. So yes, they perform better on tests. That's fantastic. Well, you know, these tools, we've put some, we've, we've got them individually available, but we also, for this webinar, I wanted to do something very special. You know, we value your time. We appreciate you coming here and learning. And the, the information that we've gotten today from Mary and, and about how to move kids from one situation and one environment to the next, I think has just been invaluable. So we wanted to put together something very special uh, for you guys today who got up on a Saturday morning and spent some time with us here on this webinar. It's really everything you need for your classroom. And I think Mary would attest that uh, having a complete set of tools and resources at your disposal in your class for whatever situation pops up is, is really critical. And we've put together so much stuff in this. It's really an unfathomable <laughs> amount of, of stuff. Yeah, we've got the wow. Yoga Kids Toolbox. We've got the book, Educating the Whole Child Through Yoga. All five DVDs in our library, three master mentor trainings that are designed specifically for the teachers on very specific topics. We've got 10 yoga mats that the kids can use in their classroom. They get their own space, their own little area uh, to, to work at and live in in their little happy mat. The yoga garden game is an interactive everybody wins game where everybody learns sharing, participation, and cooperation. And I think that's probably one of the big, big things that, that kids need. You know, I know the three-year-old in my house does not know how to share yet, and <laughs> we're working on that very hard. I can hear you get the three-year-old. 
<laughs> you can hear him in the background, can't you? <laughs> I can. <laughs> Everybody needs posters in their classroom. And I love music. I love these I love these posters um, just because you think oh just posters but one of them is like take five right mm -hmm. and you can put it in the corner and it can be like a little take five go take five breath by the poster <laughs> <laughs> do you use that in your class do you have a do you have a breathing space in your I classroom I do I do I've got the poster up it's a little corner and we've got um a little beanie baby that's a pig the peace pig. <laughs> So oh, nice. You need a little time in, the, the time in instead of time out. You had to go talk to the peace pig. Oh, love it. <laughs> love, it love it. And the other and the other poster is a sun salutation, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay, now you can talk about the music, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a big. You know, I I could spend all day on everything that we've got in this ultimate classroom bundle. And if you were to go into our store and pick everything out. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd have $785 worth of products, but obviously we don't want to, you know, we're not going to do that to you today. You're teachers, and we love teachers, and we want to do our very best for teachers. So we've taken that $785 worth of products and given a very special offer during this webinar for just $299 all in. It is uh, one of the biggest... Uh, deals that we've ever put together and we wanted to do it very special for the people on this webinar who who spent some time with us today and are really taking this idea of learning and education seriously because that's really what we as, as yogis and yoga kids are really wanting to make sure that kids today have every possible advantage and you sometimes think that with the restrictions and the standardization and the focusing in on just very minute, specific learners, some kids aren't getting the right opportunities because they're not being able to learn in the way they learn best. And we think that the Ultimate Classroom Bundle really helps a student have those opportunities for success. Um, you know, and, and, it's, and it's proven. You know, we can see the results in the test scores and in individual students. You know, Mary has Anna, one of her third grade students, who says that yoga helps me stop worrying so much. Like when I'm thinking about a test, I just use my breathing to relax me. And it's seen at home as well. When the kids leave school, parents take notice because Kate is a mother to a third grade boy who says that everyone wants their child to be in Miss Roundtree's <laughs> class because they know she's conscious of their social and emotional well-being. My son uses the tools he's learned in class to calm himself down when he thinks his insides are going too fast. And that's a great, great skill to have as an adult. How often do we get nervous and do we get anxious and sometimes we don't have the ability or the the skill set to calm ourselves down and Mary you're teaching third graders how to regulate and calm themselves down from being anxious definitely yeah. definitely and, 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 they know we can talk about it in the beginning when your insides are running too fast when your thoughts are racing like fireworks in your brain and they say yeah yeah that's what's going on and we talk about breathing they can feel their bodies calm down when they do just the take five, the, the bunny breath, where they just calm themselves down, they put their heads down, they breathe, they think, visualize, they think. It, it works. It works for grown-ups. I do it. I did it right <laughs> before this webinar. <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. Um, you know, we... You know, I've I've got a I'm 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 multitasking here. So I, after this, I'm going to have to take some of those calm uh, breath <laughs> moments for myself. Uh, we've got some great stuff going on in the chat, and uh, I've uh, opened up the offer for the Ultimate Classroom Bundle. So if you guys see it over on the right hand side, um, you can take advantage of that. And so many people, it's crazy. So many people saw the value right away and jumped on it as soon as I opened it up. It, it's 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 unbelievable, but the value is really unbelievable. You know, we've got the ultimate classroom bundle, and it really is the complete set of tools. 
it starts off with where we started off, you know, the, the book by Marsha Winnig, really exploring in depth these concepts of teaching children how to learn and giving them the tools that they need to move and learn through yoga. It also has the tools for schools bundle box toolbox. And I think this is probably I this is probably one of the most valuable pieces, Mary. Do you use it? You use this thing all the time. Every day. <laughs> Every single day. I'll pull out a card. I'll even have kids read the card or play they'll pick a card and, and do it in class. We have all sorts of games with them, but we use it every day. Yeah. yeah. We've got all the DVDs in our entire library available to you. I'm gonna, i got to meet you, baby. There you go. Um, all the DVDs uh, are available. And again, these are great for kids of all ages, and they really kind of grow with you. You know, when you are uh, growing up as a yoga kid's child, uh, you are able to to graduate and learn and build upon what you've learned um, because these poses and these these um, these moves and these concepts grow with you. So that's why we put this together. You know, we wanted teachers, educators, principals, school systems to really have the tools that they need to bring this type of learning into their classroom and uh, be able to affect children in a very positive way that they haven't been able to do up until now. You know, it's been difficult to really get students focused in a public classroom, especially as public classrooms are getting bigger and bigger. You've got so many kids stuffed into a tiny room and you've got a poor teacher there who has to get through all of this curriculum and all of this material and, you know, it's difficult to make sure that every student gets attention, but with the Tools for Schools Ultimate Classroom Bundle, kids get kind of that one-on-one -on -one time and they get the personalization. You know, Mary can pull out a card that's going to speak to that student right then and there and she can then move on to everything else she's doing and that student feels loved and attended to and has the resources that he or she needs right then and there. So I want to take a few questions and answers. I've actually been grabbing a bunch of them as they come through. Um, if you guys want to post any questions in the chat box, I'm going to go through these as best as I can um, so that we can um, look at it. Karen's asking about uh, Canadian funds. Our store is in the U.S., and so all, um, all transactions are in U.S. dollars. Um, and uh, there's a question about certification for yoga kids. This particular bundle is not a certification, but you don't need to be certified, really, but you to can be. be. You can be, but <laughs> here's the thing, and, and, and I think Mary can speak to this too, um, that you don't have to be a certified yoga teacher to teach kids the yoga kids way. No. I used the um, Tools for Schools bundle for a year before I decided to, to move forward with, with becoming a, a teacher, a certified teacher. You don't, you don't teach the classes in your community, though. You, don't, you just do the classroom? No, I do in the summer, too. Okay. I do in the summer. I'm part of our after-school program that's here in the afternoons and in the summer. So not as much, but not as much as I did in the beginning. But yes, I do. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you learn something new every day. Maybe they like, asked me to teach like the football team to do yoga for sports and and you know the opportunities present themselves when when you're making children feel successful. So, you know, you can use your love for yoga kids to to make extra money. I mean that's that's always fun as a teacher yeah. especially. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> but yeah, but you you can you can do this without um, going through the commitment of being a yoga kids um, certified teacher. Becky, Gina, and Carol all have about the same questions, and that's about um, the replay and the offer. Yes, there is going to be a replay of this um, this webinar. And I'm going to send out a link to everybody who's here so that you can check this out again later. Watch it at your leisure. Take some notes and, um, 
and and see the um, see the presentation again and share it with your principals or with your fellow um, uh, teachers and colleagues. Um, if uh, your if you need to get uh, permission from your principal or from your school board in order to make this purchase for your classroom, we're going to give you the time to be able to do that. We want to make sure that this uh, is available, and we understand that sometimes you have to go through a bit of a process um, for for approval. So, so don't worry about those. Um, you know, there's been excuses, um, and and I know um, uh, Sharon uh, expressed that you know she wanted to offer uh, yoga in an after-school program but had several excuses why it wouldn't work and uh, I'm hoping that it, it that she was able to prove them wrong and and it actually did work. Mary, what are some common excuses or hesitations that you sometimes hear? From teachers, I don't have enough time. That's the biggest excuse. That's, that's one more thing to do um, and those are the most common. Um, they don't understand. So, so I think, from my point of view, you can sprinkle it in your classroom and have testimonials to the benefits, and and it carries out into the community and into the principal of, uh, and to the after school programs. Um, it's easy to sprinkle in your classroom. Yeah. yeah. And that's and I think that's really really great. I think that's a great concept of sprinkling in yoga so that you are learning um, and, and not taking anything away. You're actually enhancing the the learning experience by sprinkling it in there. Um, another question is about how did these group poses that you were talking about? You know, do you do a lot of group poses in your classroom, and and what's the reasoning for? that. Um, Megan is, is curious about you know, group poses in the class. I use them to help with shy students, maybe students that don't feel comfortable around each other very, very much or they don't know each other. I mean it's a great icebreaker especially at the beginning of the year um, and it's, I, it's always, no, I always, I no always <laughs> What did you say, Ann? It builds cooperation. Yes. Teamwork. Yes. Teamwork, connectedness. Um, it's a great icebreaker, too, uh, at the mm -hmm. beginning of the year. And I always preface it by, you know, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then you don't have to do it. I'm not going to make anybody feel more uncomfortable by having them do a group pose or a partner pose. Summer's got a really great question, and I don't even know the answer to this, but are the cards in the toolbox appropriate for a pre-k classroom and can you modify the cards for younger children and I'm even going to take that a step further how about older children how about children in middle school and high school how would they utilize these cards um, yes the cards are easily modified um, they're, they're like Cliff's notes for teaching yoga kids it talks about all the different aspects but you take it a little more maturely for the older kids and, and you lessen it for the little kids. The little kids create their own poses. They know what a tree is. They know what a cow is, hopefully. They know what a cat is. So they create their own poses. I had a shamrock pose created one St. Patrick's Day. Um, and that's cool. So they picture whatever it is and, and they create it for the younger kids. The older kids do um, more um, adult type yoga. I mean they really get into the tree poses or um, the the volcano pose or the camel, different poses. They they get more traditional with it. That that is fantastic. And I love the creativity that, that kids have, you know, when they, they come up with their own uh, own ideas and, and own ways of doing things. And that's what this um, you know what this is allowing kids to do with the ultimate uh, classroom bundle is be creative and have that sense of empowerment to let their creativity fly and create their own poses and, and express themselves uh, in a very unique and special way. And I think that's just fantastic. And I've got a three-year-old who's 
in the background right now. Um, and we use, you know, we use some of the tools here that are in the Ultimate Classroom bundle with him. You know, I've got the the book by Marsha Winnig that that teaches how to use these poses and, and, and what they are. You know, the, the toolbox and all the cards in it are fantastic because they are adaptable and you can use them for different situations and with different children at any age. And I can't tell you how many times he's come up to me randomly and been like, let's go do yoga kids. And so I will throw in one of the DVDs because he is trying to learn his numbers and his letters right now. And, uh, and going from silly to calm, he's very silly right now in the background, um, is very important. Um, but I think teachers particularly need tools and need assets in their class um, that they can pull out. You know, because sometimes your curriculum isn't going to go the way you expect it. And so having a, a DVD for yoga in the classroom that you can pop in when things get tough and, and you need to go off curriculum for a minute, um, you know, having those tools around is fantastic. And like I said, we wanted to do something very special today. It's the first time we've ever done it. We're just trying to see how it works and how people resonate with it. But I can tell you guys now, it seems to be resonating. People have seen the value and have gone ahead and clicked on the offer um, to take advantage of our Ultimate Classroom bundle. And again, we want to make this available for people. Um, we love for uh, We'd love to work with you and, and be able to present it to your colleagues or to your uh, principal if that's something that, that you need to do. We're absolutely um, happy to do that and I'll be sending out a, a replay of this webinar later and the special link to the Ultimate Classroom Bundle will be included in that, um, in that email. It's not available on our store. You can't just go there and browse and find it. You need the special link in order to get it, but we're going to make sure that you get that special link and we'll be able to share it with uh, your principal, with your colleagues, with your school board so that they can see as well um, what we've put together and why having uh, yoga in the classroom and, and sprinkling in this different type of learning for students can really empower them to succeed and give them the platform that they need to grow and learn as they go on. Guys, I want to thank you so, so much for spending an hour with us here this morning. Uh, technical issues aside and, and uh, echoes aside, I think we had some really great information. I want to thank Anne for hosting uh, this webinar and very, very, very special thanks to Mary Roundtree for her great information and, and great experience. It's just been fantastic and it's so refreshing to see a, an educator who is so committed and so dedicated to her classroom and to her students and I think that we as a country and as a society, need more Mary Round Trees in our <laughs> lives and in our school systems. And, uh, and, and giving our kids the opportunities to succeed uh, with every advantage possible is, is the way we revolutionize our classrooms. So I want to thank everybody again for uh, hanging out with us today on this broadcast and uh, learning some great skills and techniques that you guys can implement in your own classrooms today or actually Monday when you get back to school. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, always feel free to reach out to us. You can just send an email to chat with us at yogakids.com and we'll get it to the right person. Again, thank you, Ann. Thank you, Mary. And thank all of you guys for joining us this Saturday morning. I hope your day is great and we will see you guys later. Goodbye.